All right, check it out, boys and girls. Check this out. Isn't this just incredible? We are powering this small disco light with just a few lemons, some copper two-pence pieces, and a little bit of magnesium. So all the materials here we are using are super easy to get your hands on. Yeah, not that this, this project isn't going to break the bank at all. Everything I have here cost me less than 15 pounds. And most of that was the device over here. This cost me 10 pounds. Okay, the lemons, if you go to Aldi, nice and nice and cheap. Uh, and the copper two pence pieces, you'll have some of those lying around, I'm sure. And the magnesium ribbon, um, really easy to obtain from eBay, around about £2.50 if you look around, shop around. So that's nice and cheap. And the little crocodile test leads, these are called test leads, okay? And they're just a little crocodile clip. Let me show you closer, a little crocodile clip there. Okay, and they just come in a little bundle. I've got a bundle of 10 here. They come in different colours. And this bundle of 10 cost me around about two pounds. I have a piece of paper. This is telling me what the metals I'm using. The first one is bronze, copper bronze to be uh, precise. And copper bronze was used by the Royal Mint to make two pence pieces. And here I have a two pence piece. Now this two pence piece if the camera will focus, this two pence piece, as you can see, was dated 1971. That's 49 years. That's nearly 50 years. What stories it could tell. Whose pockets has it been in all those years? Why am I using two pence pieces, which are so old? Well, there's a good reason for this. If I take my magnet, One of these two pence pieces is magnetic. Okay, so this is a magnetic two pence piece. It was made in 2012, so it's quite a modern two pence piece. The others are not magnetic. Why is that? Well, in 1992, the Royal Mint decided it was a good idea to replace the copper bronze pennies and two pence pieces with. A much cheaper iron alternative. This is just a chunk of iron, okay, worth much less than the copper bronze pennies and two pence pieces. Now, what is copper bronze made of? Here I have the chemical symbols. It's made of three chemical elements and they're all metals. We've got copper, Cu, that means cuprous or cupric. We have tin. And that's S-N. That means stannous in Latin. Yes, so tin has S-N. <laughs> A little confusing? Maybe. We're going to look at the chemicals of the periodic table in the next video. And I'll show you why some elements have strange letters after them. And we have zinc also. So copper, tin and zinc, when they're melted together, they create the alloy called copper bronze. And uh, the, the copper bronze two pence piece is what is called the cathode. This is our cathode. And that's the positive terminal. That is the positive side of the battery. The negative side is the more reactive metal. And that's the magnesium. Okay, so the magnesium is being oxidized. It's being reduced by the citric acid inside of these lemons. Okay, so... When we connect the circuit together, when the positive and the negative are connected, a, a chemical reaction begins to take place, whereby the magnesium is reduced down. Now, this chemical reaction is what's called an electrochemical reaction. There's an exchange of electrons going on. And with the aid of these wires, we're going to extract those electrons. We're going to snatch them up as they whiz between the metals. So inside of the lemons here, you have the juice, that's the citric acid, or we're going to call it the electrolyte. 
and between the copper and the magnesium inside of this juice are electrons flowing between the metals okay now i have connected this battery bank together so each one of these is a battery and each one gives me 1.5 volts now you could use as your anode your negative side that's the magnesium here if you don't have any magnesium you can use something that's coated with zinc and these are iron screws these are iron or steel screws which have been electroplated in the metal zinc and each one of these gives me 1.5 volts i've connected them all up in parallel because that keeps my voltage the same but it just gives me more available energy there's if you've got more batteries then you've got more energy okay so i have to wire them up like this parallel is important i have the next bank of batteries wired up in parallel also they're both identical batteries giving me 1.5 volts each but now i'm going to connect them together i'm going to go from the positive terminal clipping it onto the uh, the copper bronze penny and taking this wire and we're going to go right up to the top of this battery and we're going to connect it to the magnesium watch the voltage jump okay here we go are you ready watch the voltage jump as we do that there we go so we've got over three volts there three volts over three volts and that's going to be enough to connect our disco light too so let's give that a try <laughs> all right so can you see my little disco light there isn't that amazing <laughs> that is powered purely by this lemon battery here all right check it out boys and girls check this out isn't this just incredible we are powering this small disco light with just a few lemons, some copper two pence pieces, and a little bit of magnesium. Get stuck in and have a grand old time. I'm off now on a little journey. Out of the workshop, there's the pumpy wagon. We're all set for a visit to Moncaster Castle. Hey, you guys there, Eureka at home. It's Professor Pompernickel. Where am I today? It's Moncaster Castle, one of my favorite places in the whole world. And this man here, one of my dearest friends, Mr. Peter Frost Pennington. Peter, wave and say hello to everybody at home. Hello, everyone. I live here. A socially distanced <laughs> handshake. Peter is so very kindly invited me up here today to show me his pipes, his geothermal pipes. Peter, take us away. So, Peter, where are we going now? Where are you taking us? I'm going to show you where we are harvesting our energy from. Ooh! And, uh, this is deep in the, below the ground, yes? Here we are, yeah, deep below the ground. You see this different gravel here? Big different piece. gravel. Oh, yes, uh, the, the bluish grey. And it goes two big pipes along here. Two big pipes coming out of the wall there, going down here. And they plunge down there. They plunge down there. Oh, I can see. Between yes. here and the river, hidden behind the trees. Oh, yes. There's a big expanse of land. And that's where the pipes are buried? And that's where the pipes are buried. There are, I think, uh, three kilometers of pipes. Three kilometers of pipes. And how deep below the ground exactly? Uh, one and a half meters. Wow. And one meter apart. So there are 13 loops of pipes, and we pump eight tons of water down the hill, and they go into that uh, field there which floods by the river, and the more water there is, the, the better the temperature difference. So that stays a constant temperature for most of the year, and we harvest some of that energy, and they pump it back up into my cellar. So, and, and exactly how does it maintain the same temperature throughout the various seasons, although the atmospheric temperature changes? What is creating the constant? Because once you're down a metre or so below the earth, the soil keeps basically a constant temperature. It heats up a little bit through the summer and warms up and slows, uh, heats, uh, um, cools down slowly through the winter. But there's enough heat. If we pump cold water into that, the cold water will heat up by a few degrees. We pump it up back into castle and it's slightly warmer. And then we squeeze it 
in a special machine a heat exchanger and yes. by the power of physics it extracts heat so you'll you'll feel the pipes coming in are cold or they feel cold to me but then we compress it and it extracts the heat out of that water and it comes red hot wow. and then we pump the slightly cooled water back into the field and the, and cycle, the cycle continues can, that is just amazing there's no exhaust gases no fuel Magic, as far as I'm concerned, I don't understand because I don't understand physics. You do, Professor Pumper Nichols, so perhaps you can explain to me. But just by compressing it and we can extract the heat, it's like a fridge in reverse. But come inside the cellar and I will show you. Wonderful. Thank you, Peter. Look at the size of it. You two rascals up to no good. We were just uh, willing to, uh, <laughs> eager to learn. <laughs> come through here. Here we go. Wow, this is the secret dungeon. Go wiggly wiggly down the long dark corridor. Ooh, this is a spooky place. Okay. Wow, look at this place. Here we go, it's like we're in, in a mine shaft. Oh wow, yeah. check the plumbing out in here. And so this is the heat exchanger, and uh, it is summer, so we do not need the heat. The temperature, it's like a... so we can set the temperature, do -do 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 -do. up or down. Here, here are the big pipes. Oh, oh you can hear it, it's kicking up. Um, so uh, there's the big pipe with the arrow, that's the water going back out under the ground, and this is the pipe coming in. So thank you everybody at home, we're going to go back outside into the sunshine for a barbecue. Uh, thank you for Peter uh, to inviting us to the castle, what a wonderful place and the technology really is the green future of energy transfer. Well how nice of Peter to invite Professor Pumpernickel to his amazing castle. Yes, talking about his geothermal energy heating system, a green renewable source of energy and i would encourage all of you guys to come and visit moncaster castle so it's goodbye from professor pumpernickel to you guys at eureka at home goodbye for now